Good evening, good evening everyone. Happy, happy new year. Happy 22. Happy 2022 to you all. I hope you had a fantastic time. I hope you had a good New Year's Eve and I pray that this year brings us all success, peace, joy and love. And you know, lots of cha-ching, cha-ching, okay? We love that. <laughs> I'm so excited today because I have the beautiful, the one and only Amy Cisse with me. A beauty, beauty personality through and through. As you see, you see the way she sat down. <laughs> She is she is the one of the most incredible beauticians I would say in wow. this entire country because when she started like she always says she's I'm the OG. having chills no because she's the OG <laughs> when it comes to everything beauty and you know she heads Dior in Houston I'm I'm gonna, I'm having a fangirl moment as you can see whatever but I'm just gonna be quiet because I want her to do the introduction herself and welcome to sip and chat oh my god I'm so excited to be here guys um good evening and thank you for having me thank you for this is actually me. like this is actually I'm, I'm I'm excited to actually do this with you because yes. you know twins is all twins. the way <laughs> That's my twin, this twin has just gained some pounds oh in Gambia, but she's fine. <laughs> um, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely happy to be Thank here you. and and I am so incredibly proud of you Thank and what you're doing. You. And you. I just see this getting so big to an extent that you can't even imagine. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I feel that too. I feel yes. that. I receive it. I, I mean it. Thank you. Yes. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell the guys, tell, tell my viewers, tell the Snapchat crew who you are. So my name is Aminata Sise. Mm -hmm. um, and you I know guess when they go to America. Amy, that's not even Amy. the that's not you know what? That's not even the point. Okay. I actually have a reason for changing my name to Amy. Okay, well. And most people don't actually know this. Okay. Like the reason why my name is Amy is not because I just want to be American. Okay? Like most people think. The reason is because I I mean, most people who actually knew me from back then, mm -hmm. I, like I'm probably one of the OG models from Gambia. Yes. Um, so when I moved to New York, I, I was working, I was doing New York Fashion Week. Okay. And there was a girl from America's Next Top Model who I used to work with and her name was Aminata. Oh. Okay, but they called her Amina, Aminata, Amina, right? Okay. So there was a time we were actually doing a show on BET, BET Ripped the Runway. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. so. Um, they put my info on her and they and put her, her info, info on me oh. and people started thinking that I wanted to be her because and then we also looked a, we had like a similar look oh. so people were thinking that you know uh, I think she just wants to be nah I didn't want to be her nope. so then I was like there's there's no black Amy in this industry exactly. I'm gonna be the only black Amy so I picked Amy you picked Amy yes I like that though I like that that's just I mean you said some very very big names here obviously BET. BET yeah. is big. it's a big deal i know Rip the wrong way just run me through quickly because there's so much i want to get into with you <laughs> you know it, it's quite interesting actually um i remember going to america and i used to watch with the runway religiously right mm -hmm. and i was like i i'm gonna you know i told you i i believe in manifesting, manifesting. things right mm -hmm. and i was like i'm gonna be on this show one day i will be on this show and funny enough i actually um i actually applied for the show okay and i got rejected wow i was so upset okay i was like how do you reject me right. you know right. and then they sent me another email and say if you want to be part of the audience you can i say ah, how rude who are you i'm telling you i want to be with you that <laughs> way you're telling me to come and watch so it, it's funny so i went to do new york fashion week mm -hmm. and then the casting director for bet was there was there and then we were doing rehearsals okay. so then i i walk and then she 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 was pointing as i was, I was like oh, who are you i don't even know who you are yeah so then like i went backstage to finish like my makeup and then she she ran out and she was like who are you and i was like oh i'm i mean i mean that right then i was right yeah. and she was like have you have you actually applied for beauty trips and i said yeah and i was kicked out and she was like impossible we're filming tomorrow can you head to the studios after your show today I was like, yeah. yeah. And I headed to the studios, literally like walked in there and they were like, sign, sign done. done. What? It's, in, it's crazy. It's about, but also it, it says what, it, like for me, it's like timing. Oh yeah. You see that? But it was the same exact year but though. That's what I'm saying though. It's crazy. But God said you would, you'd be called. You didn't yeah. have to try. Yeah. You would be picked. Do you know I, what I mean? Yeah. Do you it's, see that? 
It's crazy. It really is. Well, this is this is my take, and I was telling Fanta this earlier on today when I was doing her makeup. I say I believe in the power of manifestation. You see, what you there's power to the tongue. We always have to pick so much, speak a lot of positivity. positivity whatever we do, you have to believe in whatever you you want. You know, you have to even think positive. So you have like the moment you you start even having negative thoughts, like hanging around with people who who mm. bring you down. Mm. That's who who you're going to be, and that's sure. what you're going to be. Sure. So you have to really try and think positive, be positive, and speak positive in your life. Right, I actually yeah. believe that. Yeah, it's it's because, powerful. Um, you did BAT, you know, mm -hmm. rip the runway, and especially back then, it's a big deal now. But back then, it was such a huge thing, and you did New York Fashion Week. Yeah, like, wow, it's it was a that lot. That was my dream too, growing up. It was a lot. It was a lot. I can't wow. lie. What was that experience like? <sighs> Think about not being able to eat for like... I mean, clearly, that's why I'm fat now. Because I'm like, I can I eat anything I want anytime. <laughs> Literally, like, you just stay working for hours. Like, uh, like, the entire day with no food. And when you finish work, all you want is, to sleep. is sleep. Because you have to wake up again like 6 a.m. tomorrow morning and be walking again and it's back to back so it's hustle like it's hard work literally like it's it's pure hard work because you have makeup changes like in like every second like from the stage you think you see that that whole checkers mm -hmm. thing it's it ends at the stage Madu. from there it's kicking shoes and oh, it's running. running it's like it's running and like they're pulling clothes off you as you're running and it, pulling hair and fix it like it's it's it's, it's crazy I don't want to do it again. You know. <laughs> no. You do. Wow. It's too much. Yeah, it's because you've done it, obviously. You know. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Be a model. They're like, it's oh a my lot. God, oh my God. You know. It's a lot. But obviously, you've been in it. You know. And you've been in this industry now for how long? Whoa. <laughs> I've been in this industry for over twenty years. It's it's ridiculous. I know. Mm, for over you know twenty why years. Cuz. People always look at people's success as, oh, hi. Hmm. And you just said you've been in this industry for over 20, 20 years. I actually, I am, just to kind of tell you how old I have been in this industry, I was one of the first models for, for Gumsell. Um, I remember that. It's Gamsel Yaiboro. Yeah, Bill Boy. Yeah, that billboard yeah. and the, the scratch cards. Yes. <laughs> And that some, smile. Some of y'all don't even know what scratch cards are. If I have the photo, I'll send it to you. Please. And um, and I also I, I I was one of the first. I was actually the first Gambian model to be on CNN. Um, and that was thanks to the Gambia Tourism Authority. They they made me the face of tourism. Nice. And so I was the face of tourism for like years. And I was getting good money then, okay? But I just wasted it. Oh, really amazing. <laughs> you had to grow up. Now you know yeah. better. Now you know better. But these are like amazing stories about you that people, I didn't know. Yeah. You it's, know? And, and it's beautiful to hear because now there are young girls out there who are watching this and they're like, I want to be like Amy. And I think for the reason why most people don't know, like they kind of leave, like, because I feel like it's social media days right mm -hmm. now, right? Like what? It, then there was no social media, mm -hmm. so there was no like commercial Way to see, see yeah. what I did, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I'm one person who doesn't believe in like you know keeping like those treasures, you like should. which I should, I know, right? But I I think because it was in the moment. Mm. And I just felt like, why? Like, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's me. Like, whatever. Like, why do I need to keep me? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. um, but they, they, I have done those things in the past. And I think the reason why people kind of see me now in a different light. And I feel like I've had three sections of where people put me in, right? You have the people who know me as the model. Mm -hmm. And then you have the people who know me as, you know, the makeup artist. Mm -hmm. And then you have people who now know me as, oh, the YouTuber. Yes. <laughs> God, I've done it all. Yes, you really have. <laughs> and speaking of makeup, she did my makeup today. Yeah, you know, okay. it's, just a, it's just a soft beat. And I love it. And I've been raving about it the whole time. If you're on my social media or my Snapchat, you see. That's we try. We she's, try. She's an amazing makeup artist and she does extremely well on skin. I think that's what I love most. Yeah. It's like, it makes it look like you have nothing on. Mm -hmm. But there's a glow about you and that's what I love. So we'll just shift now. We've talked a little bit about the modeling mm. and you know, you, you don't model like on the runway anymore. No, I just do commercial now. 
Just so commercial. I just use my face. That's it. And that's what I'm saying. So explain <laughs> to us that. What is that commercial modeling? And then so we can move into like your YouTubing now and also where you're So at. it's interesting. Like when I forced that, like I, I want to, and I want to say this. I am actually a girl who was never confident. Mm. I was bullied in school and I went to school here. It's, it's so sad and I'm sure there's still bullying going on here. Mm. I was bullied in school throughout. I was never confident. I never believed I was beautiful at all. That's never. I was the most tomboy that you ever know. I know you can't tell at all, at all right <laughs> like I I was like I was bullied throughout my life until like probably high school was better wow. um, I hated school because of bu Bully, getting of bullied course, like, and nobody but I, I did so well in school but I Aww. every time I had to go to school like Sunday heading to Monday I'm just like you again here we go yeah. um, so when I started modeling, I think it kind of made me now started believing in myself a little bit more. And it, it took somebody else. Like I actually was scouted from, um, by a lady, the name Umusi mm. from Senegal. She's one of the biggest um, designers mm -hmm. in Dakar. Mm -hmm. she, she did Paris Fashion Week like all the time. She's mm -hmm. very well known. She, she scouted me. She saw me here and she was like, do you model? I was like, what is that? Right, right. <laughs> so I modeled with, Erica, Shushu, um, all you know, all the big girls in Senegal. Then, okay, now I'm, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, so, so that's how that's how my career started into in in that field, right? And then, um, and then here I'm now, and I don't know what's next for me. You don't know what's next for you. No. You've done so much, and you know, twenty years is a long time, but you've achieved so much and you I, before we met before we even knew each other mm -hmm. I remember somebody showed me a picture and I was like oh my god who is she mm -hmm. like, she's Gambian <laughs> and that was the time people would tell me oh I mean she say you know when they see yeah me, yeah and I had to look you up like I would need to know who, who this girl is, is. <laughs> you know and I looked you up, I was like, oh my god I look like her she's amazing oh you're, you're beautiful. so beautiful I mean Thank you. it's an honor I, people tell me you look like Fanta come on <laughs> But like, and I would say that I was like, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. So when I met you, in my mind, I knew you already because oh. I was already being told, told yeah. you know, yeah. so it was, it's just so beautiful. So now that, you know, you're doing YouTube, but I just want to head a little bit into, you know, Dior. Mm -hmm. Dior is one of the most prestigious names in beauty, in, beauty. in the world. Yeah. It's Dior. Yeah. And I just, how could that happen? You know, I think I've been such a lucky child, and I, I, I think You're I blessed. just, I, I, I think oh, I'm just. You're blessed. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. Blessed. It's blessed, right? I, I think. How Nikki would say. No, I'm not lucky. I'm blessed. <laughs> you know, I'm a Nikki fan all well, day. Well, <laughs> well, uh, Nikki, but yeah. So it, it, it's crazy that I've, I feel like. For the most jobs that I've had, like I've never looked for, for jo a job. I, I like job finds me, mm. and I don't really look for it. And that's because I, I when I do something, I'm you very passionate, well. right? And well. and what I do is I put my all, all into, into it. it. I'm not a half person, person. like half yeah. cup person. Like if I'm gonna do something, I'll give it everything, even if it's not. That's good. Even if I'm not gonna get money for and it, that's good. I still would do my all for it, right? Um, and I I think. Like getting into Dior was such a blessing, mm. and I, for the first time, a lot of people, some people who are very close to me, do know this story. Mm. The reason why I actually Dior, like Dior, recruited me from like another company that I've worked mm. for in the past, right? And I'm such, a, I give my all, but I still deserve, like I still require respect, of course. right? And there's some issues that happen mm -hmm. at where I used to work and um, I remember I didn't get along with the new boss mm -hmm. and that sounds very familiar to me <laughs> and and you know he, he couldn't stand me you know and I mean obviously being a black woman yep. and a black woman confident okay and, and, and an immigrant right in America uh, yeah. these things are so difficult and they think sometimes you have to excuse my language kiss to get something wet and I'm not that person like I'll give you everything but I'm not gonna kiss that's one thing I'm not gonna do so I, I so when I left I quit that job because I was you were being rude to me mm. I quit that job not knowing if I will have a job a job and I literally got into the parking lot and called someone was like I like I just I just left you and stopped. like that's and then it's like so it's like what happened I'm like I don't know but it's not gonna work out and they're like please do not look for a job we need you I'm like, what? I was like, I need a break. I, I don't want to work. Yeah. I need a break. They're like, yeah. take a break. Let us know what you want. 
And then I took a break. I actually went to Senegal and chilled for like a whole month and then came back and they're like, okay, so are you ready? I'm like, yeah. So what do you want? How much do you want? I laid everything down and I actually kind of went a little crazy. I was thinking they would not accept Except it and then they took my offer. Hold that thought. <laughs> we'll go for a short, <laughs> our first break and when we're back, more with Tiff and Chatted with Avi. The pride we take in our brand, the work we put into constantly change the landscape and elevate real estate in the Gambia, it's compared to none. From inception, our goal was to add value to the beautiful Gambian landscape. That's why we are proud innovators of community estates. Kololi Sands is an exceptional piece of work, tailored for ultimate convenience and luxury, to bring you an element of finesse that is rare but unique in its own. This is also our pride and joy, and we welcome you to the exclusive beauty right here in Kololi and right here on the waterfront. Kololi Sands, feel the ocean breeze at your doorstep. Thank you very much. Welcome back after that commercial break. A big thank you to Global Properties, Mr. Saul Fraser, for sponsoring and coming on board. We really appreciate it. And you know, these, so let's just say, Global Properties, I'm coming for you when I make my money because I need to have one of those luxury apartments. I know. <laughs> right? They're so nice. I actually took some people there. I love it. Money. I do. Money, locate me this year. <laughs> locate us. It was coming. It's coming. Manifest it. Um, but yeah, right before the commercial, we are talking about you getting in your car and saying you're done and them just telling you, Dior telling you, you, you know. Don't look for a job. Don't look for a job. <laughs> and you know, you went to Senegal and chilled for a month mm -hmm. and then you went back. And just and got a job and I but I had to move like cities where did you move from so I moved from Houston, Dallas to Houston okay um and well, it was worth it I mean okay <laughs> <laughs> how is it that and what is your role there and what do you do so I am the regional education director for say that again it's for the young girls to know that you can do that. They can. Also yeah, do that. I mean, it's so easy. Like, if I can do it, ask my mom. She'll tell you. If I can do it, you can do it. So you're the regional education, education director, director. Okay. Um, for so basically, so for for Sephora, like Dior Sephora, right? Okay. So I have Sephora Market. Okay. So basically, I manage all the Dior business in all the Sephoras in Houston, nice. and basically also do the their training. So the people when you go to Sephora. The people who actually like service you would be trained by us and on our products and I have to also now manage the business. So it's like you have like you have like double roles there and it's a lot. It is. It's a lot and it's a lot of driving. Sometimes like the shortest trip I have to drive is thirty minutes. That's the shortest. Thirty minutes to go home to go and thirty minutes to come back home. Sometimes yeah, sometimes I wake up in the morning and I drive two hours to work. Yeah, and they have two hours to come back. Four hours. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's <That's>, a lot. <laughs> it is a lot though, but some, what are some of the experiences that you've done, that you've received there as well? And how long have you been working there for? And what has that done for black women, like for black girls? You know, I think for me, the, 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 the moment I realized that, wow, like, I don't, I, I think I don't give myself enough credit. Um, at all is when I had to do the Dior National Makeup Artist Competition. Okay. And I was the only black person um, in the whole of North America, which includes Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, obviously, like, you're in the midst of all these white people mm -hmm. and you're just like, I mean, there's no way I'm going to shine in here, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, so, and I didn't even care. Like I was just there. Yeah, like I'm here. I'm here to have a good time, and people were panicking. I'm like, I'm not here to panic. I'm just here to eat, sleep, <laughs> drink, wake up, and do the contest and go home. You know, I, I, I looked at it as like a like a like a mini vacation, right? Mm -hmm. You know, because Dior is a luxury company, and whatever they do, they, it should be nothing less than five star. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's the standard, right? Mm -hmm. So I enjoy when I have to go to trips with Dior, right? So like at the so when they announced the the, third, the second position oh no the, the third position the second position 
I was cheering for them. I was so happy. Like, yeah, in your mind. I'm like, I'm not even going to win. So yeah. what's the point? And then when they called my name as the winner, I was like, ah, ah. I, I was just shocked. I was like, ah. And I, I'm the first black person to ever won that competition. That is awesome. And the only black this person that I'm, was actually there. This is what I'm saying. Yeah, so it was, it was, a, it was like a, and that's the moment I then realized that, you know, I don't think I actually realize what I do sometimes, I, or maybe I don't take it too, like, strong. I'm just like, oh, yeah, I just want this and that's it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, some of my friends are like, why don't you say this? I'm like, I mean, that's, in, in my culture, in my culture, it's called bragging. bragging. So we can't we do talk, it. Yeah, yeah. We ha people have to do it for us. And yeah. We have to act like no, it's okay. And you know that's where that's where a lot of people like when we, uh, you, you travel. That's where a lot of people actually win us, like mm -hmm. as Gambians, because you should be able to sell yourself. You should. Like, th like you have to sit there and be like, I'm this person, and this is what I do, and this is who I and am. I know, like, do you know me? But like, we can't do it. Like, we, so when people do it, like, I get, I'm like uncomfortable. I'm like, can you just shut up? Yeah. Like, I, I, but I that's can't. also because we're conditioned to not talk about ourselves like that because it's yeah. bragging. Yeah. You know, I remember when I started Posh Media. You know, my branding company and advertising and marketing brand. And I remember I had some of the meetings and there is a friend of mine who's like a big sister to me, Jay. And she was like, Fanta, I need you to sell yourself. You've done so well and you've been doing this for 10 years. Yeah, we don't, tell we... people, this is what you do. I said, Jay, no, no, no. She said, you have to. Yeah. You have to break this culture of not talking about and yourself you know because how are they going to know? It, and you have evidence to back it up. And you know what? I think sometimes we are like, oh, Nigerian people show too much. No. But that's why they are successful. And that's why they're so forward. They're, they're very... Like, a Niger you meet a Nigerian today and he will tell you, I own... I'm the CEO of... Da -da -da -da. You're like, ah, she, she shows up. No, no, no. She's ba he's basically selling, selling himself, himself to you True. and telling you, this is what I do. Do you want to buy it or not? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And that's beautiful, though. But congratulations on all your achievements. Oh, thank you. Thank it's you. It's amazing to see what you've done and oh. how far you've come. Thank you. And where you are. You are the regional director. <laughs> I mean, but come that, on. That for me is that you <laughs> handle the whole of Houston. That's amazing. Yeah. Because yeah. Houston is big. Yeah. You know, is. so I'm very proud of you. And it oh, made me very you. happy to see because. It's like it's giving me the vibe and the zeal to say. And I think the I reason sometimes the reason why I I like to tell people my story is for the young person who's watching, mm. who actually doesn't believe in themselves, mm. or maybe your parents think if you don't like mm. if you're not a doctor, you're not a nurse, you're I you're would, nobody, yeah. right? Like yeah. like I, I was telling you this earlier. Like I came from a family of like doctors, doctors and, and engineers and, and engineers. you know yep. and. I'm, I'm a makeup artist. That's what I do, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's so beautiful that there's nothing that none of my siblings can buy or have that I can't have. Like you That's can you can make just as much money or more, more than, never, than really. what a lawyer is actually making. Is it's 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 actually the most successful industry in the entire world. Mm. Yeah. And I love that for you, and I like that sort of flex. It's, there's nothing your doctors and siblings, lawyers, there's siblings nothing they can do that I can't do. Can't do. Yeah. And this is it. So let us break the culture of oh, make up Amut Hales. Oh, you're you sick. Need. You're it sick. It's so much money, and you're we've sick. seen it. We've just do you know how much it costs to actually do your makeup in California? How much? Just like regular, like not, not like you literally have to pay like three, four hundred dollars. Regular makeup. Regular, just one person. That's about twenty thousand dollars. So you see why I don't do makeup in Gambia. <laughs> So I'm privileged, okay, because this is flawless. It looks like skin. But, um, you know, I posted earlier on my Snapchat that people should ask questions. And somebody said what advice you would give to, to someone. Uh, how is it, first of all, to being an influencer? She is an influencer. She hates it, but she is an influencer. Um, and what, would you, what advice would you give your own girls that are trying to get into business in the future? Like, I think go for it. Um, everything in life for me is a risk. Mm -hmm. Just go for it. But please, before you go for it, have passion. Give yourself a deadline. I'm a firm believer of having a deadline. Listen, I'm not, I'm, I don't believe in being a rapper for 50 years and nope. still can't buy yourself a cup of tea. Nope. Like, don't do it. If you try something for five years or two years, if you have not, if you cannot make a living off of it, quit it. Just yep. quit, just quit. It, it's not worth it, right? But what do I have for, like, what advice? How has it been like being an influencer? Being an influencer. I mean, I don't see, like, it, that's a heavy word. But like, but I, you are a lifestyle well, influencer. She has her YouTube. It's called Amy Cissé. 
she does vlogs she just did a renovation of her patio and it is beautiful and the views on that is ridiculous yeah you know you have so many views yeah. and i love how your progress is because i know you used to do youtube before but you yeah, literally stop. took it seriously last year yeah so what happened was like i started doing youtube like t literally almost 10 years ago mm -hmm. and then if you like when I, I, I was not serious and I didn't know anything about it. I was just doing it for fun. It was not for money. I'm doing it for money now. Mm -hmm. Can't lie. Okay. <laughs> you know, let's go for the facts. Um, but the thing is, um, when I started doing it then, you know, I was in and out, in and out. And then what happened was then my brother went missing. Mm -hmm. So I literally lost myself. Mm -hmm. I lost passion for everything that I had mm -hmm. going on because it was very hard to, to focus. Mm -hmm. um, the only way I had to escape was my job. Mm. So when I go to work, I make myself happy. But when I come home, I now have to face realities. Yeah. Um, and there was no way that I, like, I was able to kind of just be doing that and act like I was happy. And one person that, listen, I'm never going to flaunt for the, for the internet or mm. the, like anything. If when I'm not happy, I'm not picking up a camera. Mm. Um, I don't have to show the world that I'm happy when I'm not happy. Exactly. Like I have to leave my true moments. Mm -hmm. Like and I, I couldn't pick up a camera mm -hmm. and, and be fake. So I, I, I quit, I stopped. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic happened. Mm -hmm. And then I started like researching a lot about cameras and all these things, what I have to buy, because now I can actually invest in it. Because mm -hmm. YouTube is an investment. It is. It, it's a lot of money, it's expensive. So I, I did a lot of research for like literally six, seven months before I actually started the channel again. Because I wanted to come back and be strong. And I wanted to come back and actually kill it. Mm -hmm. And not just and like half that. cup it. And you're doing that. I'm trying. So, <laughs> so that, because you do influence girls, you do influence young girls. So how do you, is that something like, oh, I'm gonna be an influencer or it's just your lifestyle? I, I don't wake up and think I, I influence anyone or I make anyone to who they or to do what they what are they or you know I'm the reason why she is this or no. like I would never no. walk around and think that say that believe that mm. or even think of it mm. I, I believe I'm doing this for me whatever you see me do I'm doing it for me right and if somebody else see themselves in it fine right but i'm never going to feel like i am an influencer like so like i'm doing this so you can see what i look like i'm a fine girl i'm this no it's never, never gonna happen that's You're not just that's life. just not that's just not who i am or how i was raised like remember you have to remember i was i was bullet mm -hmm. i was not so comfortable yeah. with who like who, myself so there is no way i'm gonna now be like oh like I'm this and you should do this like and feel this. I, I know yeah. how it feels yeah. and sometimes that's why I don't feel the need to t to talk, talk about, about too about much you, of, of yourself of myself and what I have because sometimes that could make somebody else feel yeah. less and we have to be mindful of how much we are making other people feel about themselves. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Um, speaking of that you and your sisters have a show called Sister Show. Yes. How did that come about? How's that doing? This show is doing amazing, and I can't talk too much about it because then I, I'll go to jail. <laughs> I'll go to jail, okay? <laughs> but I, I will tell you guys that Sister Show is about to blow your mind. That's all I have to say. She's That's all I can me, say. Telling me that the whole day, and like you know, as a journalist, it, it, it's so, it's like, something. This is all I can tell you. It's something that has never been seen. Mm. I gotta know. I have to find out, you know, but I will. So I, I, if you want to know what the sister show is up to next, you have to follow the sister the show, show to find out. But I will tell you, the whole wall is going to be jaw dropped. Something that no one has ever seen ever is happening. I'm excited about this. And, and that's all I can say. <laughs> or I, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> because they actually made her sign an NDA. I did. They know. They know. They know. They know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, moving on, oh, we've talked about your, your work life and, you know, family life a little bit. And on this show, I do talk about mental health a lot. Um, and I have a segment Very important. Called, yeah, I have a segment called Never Have I Ever. And we're about to get into these two segments. But right before that, I just want to know, so actually, I mean, you're not married. No. Why is that? You're a beautiful woman. Intelligent, successful in her own right. That's all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, 
For me, marriage is something that is very serious. It is serious. Business. Right? It's not something that is a joke. Right? Hold on. <laughs> It's, it, it's not something that is a joke. Mm -hmm. So if I have to get into anything, mm -hmm. it got to be serious. It, does. It, it has to be something that's really worth it for me. Mm -hmm. If I was just to get married for my sake, I would have been married already. Ages ago. Right? But I'm not married because I have, I'm, I'm, I'm yet to be convinced. Mm. Right? It, it's like a job. Mm. If, you're going to, if, if, you're go, if you want me to come and work for your company... You have to, you have to now make me believe that this is the best thing that is ever going to happen to me. Mm -hmm. Or if not, I don't want the job. You don't want the job. No. So, see, okay, so is there a man in your life right now? I'm living. <laughs> You're living? I'm living. You're living life. But this is the thing, though, right? Any, everyone who knows me knows I have never been in a public relationship. Never. We're not in a relationship until your ma this is what we're I married, see. right? Everyone, Safanta, who's your boyfriend? You'll find out when I'm married. I t I, I, it's a meme that I actually posted recently. It says, even on the day of my wedding, you, the people coming to the wedding will be surprised by who my husband is, mm. right? But no, like all jokes aside, like I, I'm single. You're single? Mm hmm I feel like that single is like, you know the single we say because we're not married? And the person is not really like, are I'm you single, single? single? Or I'm is there someone there, but because you're not married? You... At this moment, right now, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm doing an interview session. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like that. Interview them, because you have to get the right candidate. Let me tell you the reason why a lot of marriages fail in Africa, and we don't want to talk about it. Mm. We are scared to ask the uncomfortable questions. I was dating a guy, and... I asked about financial questions. And they were offended. <sighs> yep, it felt like you, you insulted his entire generation. It's like, do, do you understand? This girl is just, but that's the fact. Like, I need to know what you do for a living. Because mm -hmm. this is the thing. I'm set. Like, I literally, I'm good. Like, I can be, I, I'm good. I can yeah. take care of myself. So if you're coming, you now have to now lay it out. Like, we need to understand, like, what this is going to look like, uh -huh. you know? Like, if you don't, and the reason, we don't want to talk about it. But most of the, mo one of the number one reasons why marriages are failing is because of financial reasons. That is actually very true. T quick, listen, it's an interview. Ask them everything. If they have social security number, ask. If they have, listen, ask. I Google every man that asks me out. Um, you know what? I'm, I was about to put. Something. I'm not. I'm not girl. I will. I will Google you. I'm gonna stalk your Facebook page. Okay. I want to know everything. Why? It's important. Mm. Listen. I, listen. I, I. I believe some people can 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 Chloe Kardashian and fall in love in nine days. Mm. But child, baby girl. Not you. <laughs> no. Not <laughs> You know, um, but, but that's that's just because I want to know you as a person deeper than what you're showing, showing me. me. That's true. That's I'm true. not saying it's impossible to find love that way, but for me, Amy, this is my This is your way. My way. And that's the most important thing. I was yeah. about to say that. To each his own. This is what I always yes. say. And this is your way of Yeah, and this doesn't that. mean that whatever if you choose to get married in two days that's wrong that's wrong no it's not wrong i'm not saying that's wrong what i'm saying is i choose to know you on a on a deeper level, level. because the reason why i fall in love is far from just a looks. the looks be what you have or yeah. what you own yeah. it's it's deeper mm -hmm. right and that's why i am 37 mm -hmm. and single and happily single happily single yeah. too i was about to say that because yeah i know um what do you look for in a man? Hmm, respect. Mm. That's heavy. I'm heavy on the respect. Let's get that. I need someone who's very respectful because respect is very deep. It goes, it goes a long way. When you respect me, there's certain things that you will not even dare think of doing. Right? And you will love me unconditionally. Okay, because today I'm skinny, tomorrow I'm fat. <laughs> You know, so you have to love me unconditionally, deeper than just what I look deeper like. Skin. Deeper than the skin and what I just look like, right? Um, I want you to love me beyond what people can see, mm. right? Take a bullet for me, mm. right? Mm. Ready to give me your kidney if I need one. Mm. That kind of love. That's the kind of love, right? But that's that Samson Delilah love. 
<laughs> yeah, right? But but honestly, like I want for me it's not much. It's respect, love, understanding. And they say I said Gambian men are not romantic, so someone who's very romantic. I was about to say that. Because you know you said that and the blogs took that like Gambian hey, men are They run away with it. Yes. They and I, they're that. still on it. They run with that. So they've labeled you as that girl that yeah. said Gambian men, men are, are not romantic. romantic. Why? Do you feel that Gambian men are not romantic? Do you think they're romantic? I genuinely don't, but I'm asking you. But like for you, I want to know. I don't think they're romantic at all. And that's the thing is, I don't think they understand what the meaning of romance mm. is. And that's where the problem is. Being romantic does not have nothing to do with money. Mm. It doesn't have to do with anything with you buying me expensive gifts. Mm -hmm. It's just how you treat me, you and, the treat me and the thought of it, right? Mm. That's what being romantic is. We were born here. We were raised here. We see how most men and when I say Gambian men I mean most, most I'm not men, saying not all, all of them okay I'm, I'm no I know some of you guys are rolling your eyes at me right now but I'm not saying all of, of them right not. it's mostly like the majority of them are not romantic even to our parents we see it we've lived it. like we've lived it we've right lived it. they are the most amazing parents but come on we've lived it we've lived how they've, they've treated their wives and we, we don't want that some of the experiences we've seen is like I would never and that's it. exactly why we're talking about it but in this generation if you speak up Wow, or they label you problematic or, or, or if you're a woman that stands out of she's a difficult person yeah she doesn't know herself she, she thinks she, she thinks she's all that no you think I am I'm all, all that, that. I like never you. said I was all that mm -hmm. that's your that's you how you how you think I am has nothing to do with who I am or what I am it has everything to, to do, do with, with you and your thoughts that's something we both agree on yes because um, you said the respect and that and what do you prefer? Because I always ask the girls when they come, do you prefer dark skin or like a light skin? So, like so I don't like middle. I don't like in between. Mm, okay, you either be dark or white. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see that. I mean... <laughs> okay. Uh, there's an exception. Which is? You can be light skin, but you have to really sweep me off my feet. That's Because the there was one. There was? Yeah. How was that? Ooh. <laughs> it was it was all of it in a bag of chips. <laughs> so what happened there then? <sighs> you know what all of you say that I'm satani. Mm -hmm. That was my satani. That was your satani. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had to walk away from my satani. Okay. It wasn't it wasn't giving healthy vibes. Yeah, it was it was, it was, it was too it was too healthy. Oh. It was, it was too good, so you have to back out. What do you mean by that? Ah, you don't understand. You'll never get it. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, we'll go with a break. When we come back, more with Sefa Jat. Thank you. Welcome back after that break. A big, big thank you to Global Properties once again. And I'll take you right back to this beautiful lady here <laughs> that I'm having one of the most amazing conversations with. You know, we were just talking about, you know, your relationship status and um, uh, your in relationship in general. In relationships in general, you know, yeah. and you told me some of the societal pressure. Do you feel like you have societal pressure when it comes to marriage? I don't care. I don't listen. Like, I. I told you, like, mm. however you think of me, and that's including, like, talk marriage talks, that's, that's on you. That's, that's how right. you feel. Yeah. That has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. Like, you thinking I should be married, that has nothing to do with me. That's, that's you, you thinking I have to get married, mm -hmm. right? But I don't care. But obviously, you want to get married. With the right person. person. You do. Like, I'm the kind of person, like, I don't really care too much about what is deemed as the norm. Yes. Right? So, because... Everyone thinks marriage, marriage doesn't necessarily mean I have to get married just because everyone else thinks I have it to get to married, right. right? Like, if, if, if it's right, I would, right? And that's how I, exactly I also feel about having kids. People mm. are like, oh, do you want to have kids? You're getting old. I don't, I, I don't care. Mm. It sounds really bad, but I don't care. Do you understand that it's not up to me to have kids? It, it, it. And, and do you understand that I could literally be 20 and still not be able to have kids? Mm -hmm. So I think it's very wrong for society, for people to always like ask these questions. Oh, do you want to have kids? But it, it, it's not up to me. And, you it, know, it's I not up to me to, to want to have kids. And if I don't have this. kids, it's okay. I am going to adopt. Like, if I don't have kids, I always wanted to adopt. Okay. And I would adopt. Okay, so you're good. I'm set. And the most important thing is you're happy. Because I'm scared of babies anyways. Why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't touch babies. You don't? No. Really? No. Wow. Not at all. That is... Why? You just... 
I, it's, it's just, ooh, ooh, really? no. So at what stage do you start liking babies? <laughs> I, I don't dislike them. I no, love no, no, them. Like, what I mean is like touch when you're them. scared to touch them, yeah. Maybe like around one. Okay, so when they When like they stop one. moving and Yeah, when they that. start being proper human. Yeah, smoking, it's like. Making uh, noises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's not bad. So you, <laughs> that's not bad. Yeah. Okay, so that's cool. Um, we'll now move straight into the um mental health segment you know mental health is something that's very important to me and i always want to touch base with my guest on it have you had any experiences with mental health because i do know that you spoke about your brother mm -hmm. and you told me that you guys lost your brother mm -hmm. do you want to touch on that a little bit and a little bit on mental health so mental health is heavy it's heavy heavy for me and my family because they they it runs in every household you go to is either we want to accept it or we don't want to accept it and and it's something that is very deep and we take seriously i'm the kind of person that i run away from problems like i what i do is i i i run away not because i don't want to face my problems but because it does something to me so heavy like a little bit more heavier than like most people can right i can't take a lot of things okay. right so mental health for me is is deeper than you actually would ever understand. Um, I when my brother, so my bro, we didn't know my brother passed until after Jamie left. That's when we know he passed. Jamie left in 2017. Yeah. My my brother went missing in 2013. So it took four years of not knowing if he's alive, if he's not alive. Is he eating? Is he not eating? We just now know the full story, story during the TRRC of how he got murdered and how they got, you know, they got them, right? But this whole thing was just leaving in a bubble, right? And oh, it was very tough in the beginning. Right before you, just to, just to take you back a little bit, you said your brother was murdered under the Jammy regime. How, just briefly, how, how did that happen? So I, I, it's, it's crazy because when everyone found out that my brother was missing, mm -hmm. They, we already knew it was Jame, mm. right? But they didn't tell me because I was very close to my brother. So it took me telling my mom, oh, I'm coming to Gambia to actually say something. No, you can't come. I was like, what do you mean you can't? I can't come. I'm coming. She's like, no, you can't. And then she had to break it to me. And then I just went crazy. It took months for me to find out, but everyone else, it was a conversation she shouldn't know, like, because she's crazy, right? Um, and it was a lot. It was heavy. It was, it was, I don't wish it to my worst enemy. enemy. And that's why sometimes when I see people, um, you know, still supporting Jame, it, it, it amazes me. It's like, do you know what I have been through? Like I was actually suicidal. I was like, I, I literally was saved by Asta. Um, it was heavy. That your 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 relationship with mental health is deeper than it's I, deeper than anyone could the, ever understand. Yeah. Um, and I don't want anyone to understand it. Yeah. Because it's I don't because I don't want you to go through it to look like you're trying to even understand it because each one is so different. different. But you see people going and just going and you don't know what really they are going through. Mm. Um, it's deep, it's heavy, it's waking up and they say, oh, your brother is missing. And you don't know how. And you don't know how, what happened, what happened. how, it, it's just were, like there. Did he live here? No, my brother. So he came? My brother came on holiday. And? He came for work. Um, he lived in Houston. Oh, wow. He, um, he actually just finished his PhD and came. Um, very smart guy, very handsome. He was so handsome. Oh, I mean, I'm sure he was, of course. I know. I mean, like he was, he was very handsome, like really handsome guy. Um, I miss him. I'm sure you. Do. Yeah. And I'm sorry about that. No, you it's know, okay. I think I've I've lived it so much. Like it's amazing. Like I can talk about it and not cry anymore. Mm -hmm. I've lived through it, like I, w you I've been through some of the, years. from some of the toughest moments of my life. And I, I had one prayer. I say, if I'm going to see my brother in a state that is going to traumatize me for the rest of my life, I don't want to see him. Yeah. It was heavy. It was heavy. 
it was. And he was murdered under that regime. Yeah. And I'm it's still sure heavy. It is. Yeah. It's something that you would never, like, it's never understood. Wow. Did you see a therapist? Did you talk to someone? Um, my family is my therapy. Mm. Like, we are very, we're very close. close family. Very, we're too close to a default. <laughs> So they, they helped you get through that as well? Yeah, I mean, friends, family, because you know, like, my friends are literally family. Like, yeah. we don't even call each other friends, we are family. Mm -hmm. So they, they helped me throughout the process. And you said you were suicidal, Asta saved you, how? Because something happened and I, too long of a story, mm -hmm. but then like, she left and went to my sister's house and then before she came back out and I saw, actually on Pandiri that, oh, the, and this is when it, this is when it was fresh. This is when we didn't even know. And Pandiri posted, oh, they've killed them. And that very moment, I was like, I'm going to kill myself. Oh, wow. And as soon as I jumped up from the bed, Asta opened the door. I was like, oh, shit. Thank God for Asta. Yeah, she that's, saved my that's life. That's crazy. And thank God for you, because yeah. your strength also helped you get over that. Not get over it, but you know, go through it to be able to be stronger, to be able to talk about it to me today and yeah. with the people. Yeah. And to see, you know, just being home. Back then, you know, when there'd be a group of people that would just go missing. And yeah. you wouldn't know why. And it'd be simply because, oh, they're in opposition or, or they, they voiced a concern, yeah. you know, and they're gone. Yeah. And that's the story with your brother as well. Just, it's, it's just... God rest their souls to anyone that died under that. God rest their souls. And I'm glad you you, you had your family with you because sometimes that's all we really need. Yeah. Our family to help us go through stuff and be better. Facts. So I'm glad you went through that. And I'm also glad you're stronger because it has yes. made you this uh, phenomenal woman that yeah. you are. So There's certain experiences. Yeah, it's, yeah. It literally has made me stronger. Like, I take no BS. I know. Yeah. They don't know, but... <laughs> <laughs> I know. But, um, you know, um, every time we talk about mental health, I want people to know that it is okay when you're going through something to talk to people. You've just heard her story. And when we started the show, you would have never thought she went through all of that. until. Oh, and a lot it. more than we have not even touched. <laughs> See, but it'd be nice to share. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it'll be too long. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just glad you were able to come here and share your story. You're able to yeah, and I and think it, it's the okay. And, the and I think sometimes as a society, when people are going through certain things, we say, Ki mm. Ki mm. we, we need to go oh, away from that. Yeah, so like we need to start listening mm. and just being an ear. That's, that's all somebody needs. Mm. They don't need too much. They just they want you really to listen. Don't. Just listen. Just listen. And don't dismiss them. When yeah. they and especially to parents too. Listen that's to you. Listen, listen. I had to have listen. a whole sit down with my mom. So now when I tell her I'm going through, so she understands. Yeah. Before she did it. Because, you know, and also I don't even blame the older generation because these are things. They don't they, understand. They don't understand. No, they so don't. So when you talk to them about it now and you have that relationship with your family. And sometimes just, all you need is just being on medication because it's just called bipolar disorder. It's some, just a disorder, that, right? True. That's yeah, true. and it's, it's all part of mental health. It is. Yeah, it it's, me is. it's mental health. And thank you. Thank you for that. So yeah. remember look for someone to talk to just to listen even if it's just to listen yeah and don't don't fret i have met someone that i can talk to that i will bring on the show that will go deeper into mental health discussions so stay, stay tuned on sip and chat uh, one of my favorite segments is the never have i ever segment <laughs> i love it you love it so with the never have i ever are you ready of if course i stay sip, ready sip, you know cheers to that cheers to that in the eyes in the eyes <laughs> Lock it. If you, the first ever have I ever question is, have you ever dated a married man? Yes. Oh, and I. How? How did what that mean happen? How? Like, did you know? I mean. <laughs> were you in love with him? Were you ready to be a second wife? Sure. You were. I came from a poly polygamous family. family. And so it, it, how are you going to be a second wife if you don't? I mean, and. It's not like it's a competition between me and, and her and yeah. like this. It's just like I have we just fall in love and that's it. That's it. Yeah. Like I was c coming to be a sister. Oh. Yeah. 
it's, that is such a refreshing thought because a yeah, lot of women would never, you know what I mean? It's, for me, it's not a competition. Like, I would actually want you to be great. Like, if I was to, so this is how I see it. Like, and this is just because this is how the society we were raised in. Like, I was raised in a polygamous family. So, like, it's normal. Like, it's not normal to some people, right? Because not everybody believe in that, right? But for me, it's like... If I happen to f like flip and fall in love with a person, like there's nothing I can do about it, right? So it's like I'm the kind of person like if I'm going to be your like the second wife, I'm not coming in here to just to be compete. like like compete with you. No, in fact, I want you to be pang and great because I want them to say that's the wives. Yes. Okay. Okay. So it's not no competition. How was that? How was dating that? What, what, was it like a hide and seek relationship or was it's it always a hide and seek for me? <laughs> I don't care if you're single or not, like, because I never want. Private. You yeah, I'm, I'm too private. Know. I'm yeah. too private. Yeah. Okay. First question down. Second question. Have you? <laughs> Come for me. I'm not a. I'm not a home wrecker. In fact, I'm a home. I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll home fix builder. the homes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's the confidence for me. It's the confidence for me. Um, never have I ever been with two people at the same time. I have. Listen. Let me tell you something about this girl. She's letting it out. I have. No, you have? How was that? Why? Hey, it was chaotic. <laughs> I fights blue and everything. Facts. Really? Yeah. The, the men? Yeah. They fought? Yeah. Over you? Yeah. Of course. I, I mean, mean, hello. I mean, sorry. Why not? <laughs> not, you know. But how? How was that relationship? <sighs> I mean. Why did you date two people at the same time? I don't know. I was young. You just wanted to try out and see who, who was who. I, I mean, I was just young. I was just living my best life. And I thought I was like the, I thought I was the shit. You are. I'm, I mean, I'm the shit, but you know. Okay. Third question. <laughs> I like the way this never have I ever is going. Have you ever been high out at an important event? Have you ever been high? High? Or under the influence? No. 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 Okay. So this is, and the reason is because... When I first started modeling, my first contract was in, was in Paris to do okay. Paris Fashion Week from Gambia. Nice. And somebody came and told my mom that models are prostitutes. Yep. They did so that. what happened was, so when I moved to America and started modeling in New York, I actually have like been to after parties with cocaine like all over yep. the place. But I've always told myself, that would not this be is never, never going to be me. So not even alcohol. Nice. I like that. Yeah. Me too. I like that. Fourth question. Never have I ever taken a friend's man. Never. That's never. disgusting. Okay. Never. Okay. Final never have I ever question. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> never have I ever made out in a public place. I have. Sip on it. Take a, take a glob. I haven't. I'm sipping for her. <laughs> I haven't. I'm sipping for her because... Why not? That's a woman that's lived anyway, and I'm happy. And that was the final one. And I think this is that's the it? never. Yeah, this is the quickest never have I ever. I've ever like. I thought you were gonna get juicier than that. Come I, on. I have one more. I'm just like, I, I'm just bracing myself. I have one last one. Never have I ever been in a threesome. Ever. Ew. Ew. Disgusting. Okay. Okay. My man is my man, period. period. You're not okay. staring in the bedroom. No, <laughs> not in the bedroom. No. no never. Ew, disgusting. I, I, I mean, if you like what you like, I get it. it. But for, but you, for me, no. honey, that's a no. Okay. I can take charge. You don't need to look at somebody else. Period. I take charge, baby. <laughs> I own this. <laughs> Thank you so much. You've been such a great sport. This brings us to the end of this different chat oh, segment. Oh, I'm sad. I love it. And you've been amazing. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Very much. Thank Just you for talk, having me. Talk to the audience, guys. Just you know, I want you guys to support Fanta Aww. and everything she does. Thank because you. let me tell you something. She is incredible. Thank you. She is passionate. Thank you. And... I see her doing a lot more than Thank this, you. and I told her already, yes, and I think she, she needs to pick it up yep. and get it going. Yep. Um, and I am so incredibly proud of you and your entire team. They've Thank been amazing. You. They've been amazing. I have the best team, to be honest. This is E my E. You know? Ibrahima is my guy. No, this he's mine. He, okay. Did you see my phone? Mm -hmm. It's called E my E. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, Ibrahima is my guy. 
And you don't know Ibrahim Asidi. Ibrahim Asidi works for Africa, but he is one of the most brilliant people I've ever met. And is the way he loves and supports me in everything I do. Oh, he he helps me out he a helps lot. You, yeah. <laughs> Like even when this 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 episode, Ibrahim posts all my episodes on YouTube, and I trust him, and it's never and it's never even about him. But I just wanted to say that. No, it's amazing sometimes too. Because yes, because yes, he's yes. an amazing person, and the way he helps me, even with proposals to take to companies, Ibrahim, I would call him at any time of the day. He will pick and up. He's there. Yeah. And that's a friend. We appreciate we you. Do, we really do. You're an amazing person. If you're not here, my videos up. will not go up. <laughs> I'll put his picture up, but just, just to let you know. No, we'll they'll steal him. That's actually true. No, the man on the dark. I like that. Media, Mis misery. If you're on my social media or Snapchat, you see Ibrahima. You know, he's, and he's a fine man too, okay? Yes. <laughs> but, um, Are you single? Hey, <laughs> problem. I like this. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming. Thank I you. really appreciate you. You've done you. so much for the beauty industry in Gambia and abroad because the way people look up to you, you make everyone want to boss up. For me, that's it. Please boss up. It's like own your stuff. Don't let no you. man control you or tell you what you can and cannot do. Mm. You are a boss and you can be and do anything that you set your mind to. And the right person will always locate you. Always remember that. Every you don't time. Have to settle. The right person will always locate you. It will find you where you're at. It will. It yeah. will. Never give up on your dreams and always remember peace, love, and cha-ching, cha-ching. Cha-ching. I love it. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>